My name is Sarah Schock. I'm a professor in the biology department. Um, I'm a, an evolutionary genomicist is my subdisciplinary identity. I am going to just talk, describe, slash ramble a, a very brief amount of time about the bio major. Then Kelly will talk a little bit specifically about the chem major. And then Kelly and I will tag team a bit about the BMB major which is stands for biochemistry and molecular biology and it's essentially kind of a standing interdisciplinary major between our two departments because for so long students wanted to do that and now it's just fossilized as a um a, a thing a bridge between us the straight up biology major that we have involves taking a handful of introductory courses it involves taking a handful of advanced level courses and of course like every major at Reed, we do a, a undergraduate thesis the senior year. I'm Kelly. I am an associate professor of chemistry. I just got tenure. Um, and I am a bioinorganic chemist. So basically, I use spectroscopy. I use, I study the interaction between light and matter. So I do x ray absorption spectroscopy, native tryptophan fluorescence spectroscopy, rapid freeze quench, a lot of kinetic stuff but also just using different kinds of light and energy to perturb proteins that have metals in them so that we can understand more about the fundamental chemistry of uh, how these things work, which is super cool. Um, yeah, so the chemistry degree at Reed is pretty much what you would see uh, anywhere else with like the fundamentals, right? Just like with any chemistry degree, you're gonna take introductory chemistry, which I actually am the Chem 101 instructor. And we actually teach it a very different and sort of experimental way that is very conceptual. So you actually don't really see an equation until about a month in. Um, it's really about understanding the fundamental forces of nature. And oddly enough, by the end of the course, when you look at the equations that probably gave you some you know, a little bit of shivers in your chemistry classes if you've taken them, um, you're actually conceptually ready to say, oh, this isn't so scary at all. I know what this represents. And so it really prepares you um, to not only get the information, but retain it, not just like a bunch of facts, but instead really looking at the concepts. It's called Clue, Chemistry in Life, the Universe and Everything, if you want to look it up. Um, and it's peer reviewed, like it's really cool. Um, anyway, after that, you'll do your organic chemistry. Love it or hate it, I loved it, but that's why I'm a chemist. Um, we have excellent chemistry, uh, organic chemistry professors, and Rebecca takes you through all of it. It's really an experience. And by then, basically what we're giving you is the toolbox of how to speak chemistry. And from there, there's a couple of different ways you could go. I mean, of course, at the same time, you're taking awesome liberal arts classes, so you're not just you know, just focusing on chemistry all the time. You might be taking art classes or language classes, which is so awesome. Um, and from there, basically, you start to think about not necessarily what bin a professor would I, you know, like to work with, but rather how can we all work together to answer some question I've had or what kind of focus would I like to have after college? And we just help you kind of put something together that really works for you in terms of um, both what your focus and interest is and then also what you're going to do your thesis in. It's a good vibe. It's a good department. I feel like our department culture has really become so vibrant. We have good student clubs. We have like actual climate surveys where we're checking in with students and they're checking in with us. Like we're trying to really create um, the chemistry department that that we wanted to see, I think, as underrepresented. Many of us are underrepresented. Like we are creating that department that is so exciting to us. And so it's been great. Everyone's been on board and I think you'll find it to be a really fun place. When you have students who are interested in areas that maybe aren't the specialty of a professor, how does that how does that work? How do you help students kind of explore in those cases? I think that often there are liaisons that we can make or provide to other people if there is a really particular thing like that. We're also a small school, but in a, a city with many other schools, and it, especially with OHSU being a real behemoth. The Oregon Health and Science University is right across the river, and they have a hospital and a medical school, but they also have a huge basic research component to the university. And so I have also often had students who I'm their thesis advisor here on campus, but they go up once a week and work with someone on something that's, you know, at the primate center that OHSU has or something that's just 
it's never going to be physically possible for a small school to host that kind of facility, but we can, since we're near it, facilitate that kind of research anyway. So lots and lots of options like that are available through our connections with people at other schools. I get a lot of students who maybe are thinking about majoring. I'm not all about, you know, indoctrinating or anything like that. If they love, I want them to come away enjoying or respecting chemistry for what it can provide. And then if they fall in love with it, awesome, my plan worked. But um, I try to look in class for what students get excited about. And then I try to provide more information about it. So if I mention something and students, you know, even just an individual student, it's like, because we have a pretty good ability, even though the STEM classes at Reed are a little bit larger, just by necessity, um, we have conference, like at least in intro chem. And so you do have these smaller uh, spaces. And so when I'm talking to students, I'll kind of pick up on what they get a little more excited about and then talk to them about that. And especially with my advisees, um, when they go on about something, I'll be like, hey, there's actually a field for that. Or there's, you know, why don't you talk to this person? Or just helping them understand that even though we're at a small college, which is has so many advantages in so many ways, um, for you to understand that that science is the future of science is collaborative 100% and I think many of the professors at Reed in STEM are very collaborative and like Sarah said she knows people if you're interested in something and we never want you to feel like you're trapped like undergraduate is undergraduate you can try everything and see what sticks or what you like and it doesn't have to be your final destination in the world but once you've decided something interests you definitely I think also summer opportunities Sarah like having students work in your lab, especially um, early on, just trying it out and getting paid for it. It's pretty awesome. And if you didn't love it, that's fine. You had a great experience and you've ruled something out and you can try something else. What do y'all talk about? Asks Anara. Uh, what do you discuss? How does it help with connecting topics outside the classroom? Is it just sitting, is it just talking while you're around the lab bench or what is it? What does seminar look like or conference look like? There are a few different ways you can look at the word seminar. One is that it's when you have a bunch of VIP speakers come and talk about their research. Um, and we actually have a lively seminar program, both in biology and chemistry. We have people from all over the place, very famous people. Half the time we have to tell the students, I don't think you know how famous this person is, right? Um, and, and that's important, right? Is that you know that you're actually getting networking opportunities. Um, hey, I saw your talk at Reed, you know, this was great. I'd love to come check this out. Um, another word or another way that the word seminar is used is usually like a journal club, I would say, or a special topics of some kind, at least in the biology sense. And then conference, I think, you know, we have conference for, for intro chem and for uh, OCHEM. And we have something like a lab lecture conference for uh, my methods by biochemical methods laboratory. And basically that's where, you know, we have our larger lecture and then you come in for this conference. And basically we work on problems. Um, we look at special topics, we work in groups. And so it's kind of a different thing. So there's three different types of ways in chemistry at least um, that we use that. Yeah, we, we really only have the first two that we use the word seminar for. We don't use the word conference in the biology department, but we do have discussion classes, which are basically what Kelly described as a conference in, in chemistry. So BMB, um, at the upper division, like basically uh, juniors and seniors, I personally teach a great number of BMB. Uh, majors because those are the courses that I cover in the chemistry department. You know, it really is this moment, I guess I would say, and the reason I'm talking about this is that at that moment of becoming a rising junior or something like that, you've taken biology courses, you've taken chemistry courses, and now we start to put it all together um, for you to start thinking about thesis and kind of the, the bigger questions you might want to answer. And so the BMB major is rigorous. I would say um, there's a little less flexibility in what you can take outside because you're taking both uh, chemistry and biology courses. That said, most students who choose that um, interdisciplinary major are really driven to do it. And, and we're really good at asking you the questions like, do you actually need it or do you just think you need it? Because if not, if you're in love with biology, by all means, just wallow, go, you know, be, be a biologist. Um, if you want to be a chemist, fine. 
Um, but if you want to do something that integrates those two and really kind of brings our two departments together in a way that I think is really special, then the BMB major is important. You will qualify, meaning that you will take a qualifying exam in each department. Uh, we may change that in the future, we may not, who knows. Um, it's a lot of work for the students and for professors alike, but what it does is it's a, it's a way of learning on the fly where we basically query you on what you've learned in your biology and chemistry classes, and then you're able to declare the major of biochemistry and molecular biology, and you will write one thesis, <laughs> so not two, um, in, and you can choose to work with whomever you might like um, that is supportive of a BMB type thesis in either the biology or the chemistry department in some special cases like Sarah was saying up at OHSU, Portland State University, um, there's, there's different options there. How big are Reed's intro classes usually and then what size are the higher, uh, sort of higher level ones? Intro bio is about 80 to 90 students in the lecture and then 24 in the lab. And then most of the upper division courses are between, you know, very few people, depending on the course, uh, to uh, our cap is 36, I believe, in the highest enrolled courses. Intro chem is... Um generally about 45 to 50 per professor we've brought that down a bit just to be able to um so we've just kind of done a slightly different take uh, and but then we also have our conferences once a week um which are hopefully about 10 to 12 students per conference section um, and then at the upper division my biochem class i would say is probably 14 students and then the biochem laboratory is about 10 students 